Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, we're not quite living amazing right now. You know, we had a bad day the other day. And we wanted to make this video to share tips with you on how to get through bad days because you are going to have a bad day. Yeah, they're going to come whether you're an RVer or living in sticks and bricks. Yeah, and then, you know, to top it off, you got this ticket. Yeah, well, that was a capper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's take you through this because we know, particularly living in a small space like an RV, that you're going to be challenged to get through bad days. So we do have some tips. If you don't know, Paul and I have been on the road for three and a half years, and this is not our first bad day, and sadly will not be our last bad day. In fact, you know, if you're a regular viewer, you... <laughs> <laughs> you know that we always have bananas behind us because we like bananas and they're usually fresh, but this ba banana pretty much represents our day. That was that was the other day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's start off with the fact that when we break camp and hit the road, we typically are gone by 9, usually 8 or 8.30. Yeah, I think the latest we've ever left is 9.30. So this bad day happened on a Monday, of course, and we only had 10 miles to get to our next campground. They would not let us in before 12.30, so we are leaving our campground at noon. We had to dump, and that was going to take probably 20 minutes, so, you know, leaving at noon was would get us there at 12.30, 12.40, and that would have been perfect. <laughs> right, so we did time it perfectly, except once we got moving, and, you know, we're, we're driving down the road all hitched up, we could hear that our hitch didn't sound right. Now we had a relatively new pin box put in by More Ride last September. We happened to have an appointment the next day at More Ride that we didn't think we were going to go. There was nothing related to the pin box. We were going for something else that we decided we didn't want at the last minute. So we were going to cancel that appointment later that same day. And and then we said, okay, maybe we need to go two more rides so we can have them look at it. So that brings us to tip number one, is be flexible. We happen to be 330 miles from more ride. We made reservations 110 miles up the road. We're like, okay, now we're not doing a 10 mile drive. We're doing a 110 mile drive. And that is part of our RV life is you've got to be flexible. Your plans absolutely can change on the dime. So now I'm driving and I missed a turn. So you know if you're driving on the interstate, you miss a turn, what happens? You've got to make a long U-turn. So I made a U-turn that took 20 minutes. Well, 25. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> right. There was this really gnarly accident. Um, they were, it was so bad that they were using a... Um, a backhoe? A backhoe, it? yeah, a backhoe to dig parts of the, <laughs> I think it was, I mean, it was so torn up, it was hard to tell what it was, but I saw a big saddle tank, so I'm assuming semi. Yeah, so this accident delayed us another 20 minutes. These type of things happen too, and that brings us to the next tip for getting through bad days, is have a good attitude. What did you say when I missed that turn? That's no big deal, just take a deep breath, you know, we'll make the U-turn and get back. And I think that's really important because I, it's so easy to blame the other person or get into a, a finger pointing thing. You yeah. you should have, I should have, blah, blah, blah. What were you thinking? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. just makes it worse. So definitely, you know, have the good supportive attitude because it's already happened. You can't rewind it. That's just the way it is. And I'll tell you what happened. We were both talking about this Yahoo in a deleted diesel pickup blowing coal down the, down the freeway. And we just couldn't believe that, you know, he, I mean, we said they should start giving tickets for people yeah, like that. Yeah, right. We were saying <laughs> there's something that the cops should be pulling people over for. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. So we missed the exit because we were distracted. Yes. So that brings us to the fact that we started talking about our drive the next day to Moor Ride from Indian Lakes Campground to Moor Ride. We realized it's over three hours, closer to four. Our appointments at 10 a.m. We would have to leave at 6 a.m. to be safe. So we just decided to push on and, and go all the way. <laughs> That's right. So we turned a 10 mile drive that we thought we were going to have to 110 to now 330. <sighs> and so what else could happen except Paul could get a ticket, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Here's the story about the ticket. I generally drive in the slow lane when we've got the rig behind us. And I was doing that. Speed limit was 70. I was doing like 63, 64. 
I see this cop parked under an overpass with his lights on. There's no other vehicles with him. He hadn't pulled anybody over. He's just sitting there with his lights on. Clue number one that it's a trap. I look in my mirrors and I see cars coming up on my left and they're coming fast. You know, it's like I said, the speed limit 70, I'm doing 64. Okay, this is the road side, the, the driver's side of the vehicle. This is obvious at the back. That's the rear. And that's the other side. That's curbside. Curb side. Yeah, this is facing forward. Okay, we're coming up to the, the officer. I've already moved over as far as I can, but I've got vehicles coming up on my left, so I can't make a lane change safely. There he is. So I didn't think it was safe to make the lane change to get over, so I pulled over as far as I could up to the line. In Just a couple feet. He moved over a couple Yeah, a couple, feet. I moved over a couple feet. And it turns out they're doing a campaign uh, called, um, and you know, of course they chase us down, sirens and lights and everything. They're doing a campaign in Kentucky called Move Over Campaign, and the ticket that Paul got is failure to give right of way to emergency stopped vehicle. It's actually, we googled uh, traffic citations it's actually not a traffic citation but because they're doing this campaign you you, you can't prepay you, you have to go to court you know <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know we called to see if we could just pay it online they said no this is not payable and and oh there's two other people in your situation you know they're passing through Kentucky and they want to pay it too this is some some rednecks idea of a speed trap i'm like let's just look on the bright side we're helping fund their roads right yeah but i'm sure kentucky needs money for the roads <laughs> every state does by the way that's by the way the roads are out there but this brings us to the next tip sometimes you can be right and you still don't win and i think that actually works in relationships too sometimes you can be right but you're still not gonna win yeah i mean we could fight this and I think we would win because we have video. I mean, a normal vehicle does not have four cameras on it riding down the highway. We have all the evidence we need that, that, that it was not safe for me to make a lane change. But we're not going to go back to Kentucky to go to court. So we're just going to say, hey, you know what, we, we helped Kentucky's <laughs> uh, move over campaign and also by watching this video, it might give you all a heads up to please move over if you can. So I want to give a shout out to Super Circuits. We've had these cameras for a year now. We love them. We have a video about them. So we're not going to talk any more about them other than we have them on 24 seven and they saved the day pretty much much with this at least vindicating Paul. So now we're at Moore Ride to have our, our pin box looked at and I have to say a big shout out to Moore Ride too because they're so on the ball. I mean they treat every customer like their, their most important mission is to take care of that customer. We had our independent suspension done by them last September and they you know we took our concerns about the pin box very seriously. The pin box has rubber in it and it allows it to move fore and aft to cushion some of the normal chucking that you get when you're driving down the highway. It turns out that's working just the way they designed it to work. They made us feel good about that because they watched. They had uh, one of us in the driver's seat. They kind of jogged alongside, had us hit the brakes really hard and they watched and they, you know, they really inspected that and, you know, they confirmed that it's good. But because we were still hearing these funny noises, they went, I think, above and beyond, got got in the truck with us and we drove around the block and we, we have a back window in our truck and we were able to see what was going on. And actually what was going on, we have an Anderson hitch and the Anderson hitch was lifting a little bit off the truck bed and coming down and the gritty noise that we heard that we thought was disintegration was the gritty noise of our truck bed liner. Yeah, it's actually not just lifting in the back. On acceleration it's lifting in the front and on, on stops it's lifting in the back. Basically the bottom of the Anderson hitch is slightly bowed. Yes, it is warped. We did a video about the Anderson hitch two years ago mm -hmm. and people ask us, well are you still happy with the hitch? Well, we're very happy with it. It's 35 pounds, it's easy in and out, it's one person can hitch up on this hitch. What we both like about it is that you don't have to be 
straight on to hook up or disconnect. You can hitch on a downhill, an uphill. It's very, very easy. Yep. I did Google. I didn't find anything that said that the, that the warping hitch is common. We've, like I said, had it for three years. So so it just took three emails from Anderson. They said, you know, where did you get it? How long have you had it? What's your address? That was the, th those were the three questions. So they are overnighting us a new hitch and we will keep you posted because we, we think that the, we don't know what, how it warped. No, we really don't. We hope it's just a fluke. It's been flawless up to now. Everybody's going to have a bad day, regardless of whether you're an RV or, or living in a house. Just don't make it worse this would be my advice yes let us know of any tips that we've missed for getting through a bad day and certainly share your bad day with us we'd love to hear it